Hello, I'm Bettina Arndt and I'm finally the making the move out of print media into the world of vlogs. So if you notice any weirdness, it's just because we're getting used to all of this, a bit of experimentation here. But this time I couldn't resist. I was sucked in. I was actually really excited when I discovered that Hack Live was hosting a debate on is male privilege bullshit. Hack Live is this television show which is linked to Triple J, the radio, ABC radio, which attracts a large youth audience and has never been remotely sympathetic to men. I wrote an article in The Australian suggesting this might represent some sort of shift to, in the cultural dialogue in the ABC, actually daring to suggest there are two sides to this story. Cracks are finally appearing in the stronghold feminism has on our public discourse, I suggested. Well, those cracks have been totally smoothed over. Perhaps it's not surprising they're running scared as a result of the huge outpouring of sympathy for Cassie J after the treatment she received in our very hostile Australian media last week. I'd organised for Cassie to appear on the project and Weekend Sunrise, and it was shocking for me when she came under such a hostile attack on both programs, and particularly when Andrew O'Keefe and Monique Wright lied about the fact that I'd actually sent them the link to the red pill a month before Cassie was to appear on the program. Uh, and they had, we also went and gave them a whole lot of links in the week preceding the program. So they had ample opportunity to actually see that. I mean, the great thing was, was that as a result of Cassie's savaging by our media, the movie, of course, received a heap of publicity. And I mean, it is really doing well in Australia. It's the number two. Um, movie on YouTube in Australia, which is just extraordinary for a documentary. And we've got all these people talking about men's issues in Australia who've never talked about this sort of topic before. Plus, we had the fantastic International Conference on Men's Issues last week at the Gold Coast. I had Karen Straw actually staying with me in Sydney, which was great fun. And we, we got her on to um, Sky News with um, Rowan Dean and Ross Cameron. Uh, we did a Q&A with her on Mark Latham's Outsiders and she actually gave a fantastic talk at the Sydney Institute. If you go on the Sydney Institute website, you'll be able to download the podcast of that one. A really amazing talk. But maybe all of this was enough to have the people running the ABC a little scared. Suddenly they've given up all pretense of running a fair debate on the issue of male privilege. They've been posting promos for the show over the past few days. Now have a look at Karen Strawn's little plug. Uh, she's promoted as a gender traitor. I was actually in the, in the room while this was being filmed and of course the, the producers were goading her, trying to get her to say something provocative. And Karen Strawn is known for her nuanced, reasoned, careful answers on all these sort of issues. Uh, and so they had to work really hard to get her to say anything that they could use and chop up in this sort of way. I don't want to live in a world where I see men as my enemy and where I feel like I have to have some kind of trumped up loyalty to every person with a vagina on the planet. That is just ridiculous. Yeah, I describe myself as an anti-feminist, um, sometimes as a men's advocate. Men can't necessarily talk about their issues without being labelled as angry, misogynistic, violent, dangerous. When it comes from a woman, it, it puts a softer edge on it. Australia is kind of a hotbed for men's rights issues right now because feminism has gone completely batty. I, I think that society has always ignored men's pain. I think that society has always had a vested interest in ignoring men's pain. So we have Karen Strawn as a gender traitor. Now have a look at... Clementine Ford's little promotion. Here she's presented as some sort of gender warrior, boasting of the fact that she's a boner killer. Um, there's a bit of a contrast there, I think. My name's Clementine Ford. I'm an angry feminist and notorious boner killer who fights for women's rights. Male privilege is men being celebrated and lauded for repeating the work that women have tirelessly done on their behalf. Women who are fighting for dignity and respect and humanity aren't doing it so that men can feel bad about themselves. But the fact that so many men continue to make it about themselves is, again, an example of male privilege. And this is what needs to be dismantled. I don't think of myself as a crusader. I just see myself as a girl standing in front of a million boys asking them to be better. 
So we're starting to get a bit suspicious about this program and the crunch came yesterday when we discovered that the ABC, ABC2, which is actually showing this Hack Live program, is running the day after the program a movie called The Hunting Ground. The Hunting Ground is a film which has been thoroughly discredited across the world. It presents false claims about a rape epidemic on US campuses. It ha includes all these total misinformation about rape statistics. And it does an incredible job on a few key rape cases where males were falsely accused, as it turns out, and ultimately exonerated. But in this movie, they're presented as totally guilty, of course. 19 Harvard law professors have spoken out and denounced this movie as misrepresenting the legal cases that feature so strongly in the documentary. What's fascinating about this is the filmmakers have never pretended that their movie is anything other than propaganda. We don't operate in the same way as journalists. This is a film project very much in the corner of advocacy for victims, so there'd be no insensitive questions or the need to get the perpetrator's side. No need for the perpetrator's side, people. I mean, most extraordinary movie. The movie is actually being shown across Australia as part of an ongoing campaign to try to prove we've got this rape culture on Australian campuses. Uh, we're very much following in the path of America, which went through this whole process some years ago. And what we're seeing is exactly the same pattern. First, shonky statistics are produced suggesting that heaps of students are suffering from sexual abuse or some sort of unwanted sexual advance on campuses. In Australia, we had the Union of Students uh, announcing that 73% of female students have experienced that sort of unwanted sexual advance or rape or whatever it is. And what they don't mention is that that study was totally self-reported. It included people who were abused or, you know, approached in some unsavoury way off campus. It didn't even apply to students. It just people who were on campus, but the experience could have happened somewhere else altogether. So we had that Union of Students survey, and then guess who leapt in? Of course, the Human Rights Commission, and they immediately promised a million dollars to do another survey, another shonky self-reported survey, to, which is going to produce statistics showing how many students across Australia are at risk of this sort of rape. I mean, it's, it's total nonsense, of course, because all the evidence sh shows very clearly that university campuses are one of the safest places if you're a young woman. If you go out into the streets of Redfern or out, you name it, some of the more dubious parts of Australia, you're much more at risk than you are on our privileged university campuses. But no, they're busily cocking up this whole idea of universities being a place of particular risk. What a joke. I mean, this movie being shown the day after this supposed unbiased debate on male privilege. But it gets worse. Yesterday, this article was posted on the Hack Live website. What about men, it says, challenging the MRA claim of a domestic violence conspiracy. And this whole article is taking issue with the idea that there are male victims of domestic violence and presenting the case, of course, that it's all about violent men doing things to women and nothing to do with the fact that sometimes women are violent to men. I'll include a link to this article with the video, um, but I'm also going to be putting a rebuttal to those statistics when I actually have some time, and I'll get that up on my website. What's fascinating about this particular piece of shonky journalism is they approach as one of their experts, Michael Flood, who I've mentioned in many of my articles as one of the people who is most misleading when it comes to domestic violence statistics. He has been caught out a number of times presenting statistics that are totally untrue. Uh, if you want to look, follow up on that particular issue, have a look at my article, Silent Victims, which is on my website. Talk about showing their hand. I mean, what were they thinking? putting this blatant anti-male propaganda on their website the day before they were attempting to convince people that they were going to be, do an unbiased, dispassionate debate on male privilege. You'd have to be kidding. Well, the really funny thing is this blatant display of prejudice has really done them in. Cassie J has decided she's not going to do the Hack Live program 
because she's seeing ample evidence this is going to be another stitch up and who can blame her? She doesn't want to face another project or weekend sunrise where she faces hostility and no chance to really present her point of view. She's really concerned that there's lots of evidence that Hack Live is going to favour some guests over another and be really promoting the feminist perspective. So she's decided to opt out. And I think a lot of people around Australia will think she's doing absolutely the right thing. Cassie has been contacted by so many Australians saying they're really embarrassed at the way our media treated her. And the last thing that we want is her to be done over publicly again. So here it is, proof positive that the ABC is incapable of fair treatment when it comes to discussing matters which challenge feminist orthodoxy. Last year I heard from some lawyers who are thinking of taking action against individual board members of the ABC over their failure to ensure that the ABC fulfills its charter in giving fair treatment to both sides when it comes to matters like this, which are in the public interest. I'd suggest this is a very nice case for them to use to sharpen their knives, just one of many.